my name is Yulia. It's fall, baby. Fall, autumn, wherever you're from. <laughs> yeah, it's autumn 2020. It's raining outside. This might be picked up on the audio, I just realized. Never mind, never mind. So, this is my favorite season. I love autumn. And today I thought I would give you some fall, cozy, autumn recommendations. They won't be scary because I am a wimp and can't watch horror films. I've seen a few, like um, I've seen Jordan Peele's films, I've seen things like The Sixth Sense. <laughs> I've not seen a lot. So my fall, autumn, spooky um, recommendations will not be the spooky kind, more the cozy kind. Let's begin. The first thing I want to recommend is a mini series called Over the Garden Wall. It's an American animated television mini series created by Patrick McHale for Cartoon Network and it aired in 2014. The series is about two brothers, Vert and Greg, who find themselves lost in this kind of magical, mystical, mystery forest and basically have to find their way home. And each episode centers around a different adventure. But um, yeah, and every adventure is like, it's like a story in itself. So every episode is one story, but there's like an overarching plot. And which is obviously the boys trying to get home, but also the relationship between the boys. It has just the most beautiful autumn aesthetic mood. It's very kind of creepy, but in a kind of lovely, fantastical way There's like, talking pumpkins and there's evil spirits and there's like a weird orphanage and a school and there's all these kind of things. It's just kind of cozy and a bit spooky but not really if you're an adult. <laughs> it's also lovely to see the relationship between the brothers and Greg who's the younger brother is kind of naive and sweet and fearless and Vert is this kind of teenage boy who's very dramatic and he's in love and he writes poetry and he's very relatable. The most iconic relationship is the one between Greg and his frog. Love it. It's just real. It's just real, man. It kind of reminds me of like Studio Ghibli films, like a weird atmosphere and you're in this fantastical world, but it just reminds me of it. It's not really like it. And the best thing about it is the iconic song that comes up potatoes and molasses potatoes and molasses la 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 I might cut that out I regret my next recommendation is a film and it's Coraline Coraline is a 2009 American stop-motion animated dark fantasy horror film can you tell I copied that from Wikipedia it was directed and written by Henry Selick and it's based on the book Coraline by Neil Gaiman. The story is about a young girl who's kind of very adventurous, very wild and free-spirited called Coraline. And her she moves into a new house with her parents. And in this new house, she finds this kind of portal, discovers this parallel universe where everything that's wrong in her world is kind of idealized and perfect. So not to spoil it, but like her parents are really caring and always have time for her whilst her parents in the real world have to work a lot and usually don't have time for her. I just said time for her twice. I love Coraline also for its atmosphere. You will see a lot of these films I love for the atmosphere. Um, it's just the house is so creepy and the parallel world is so fantastical and weird but also the, the real world is kind of dreary and bleak and Coraline kind of stands out with her yellow raincoat and she has really weird neighbors and it's just the whole thing is like perfect Halloween spooky vibes. It's almost kind of melancholic, the whole thing. It's kind of sad. You don't feel comfortable in the world, I'd say. It's not a really a place you want to be. The stop motion is so, so beautiful and the colors they use. There's a scene where she's in the parallel world in the in the garden. It's just so beautiful and fantastical. And I remember I even saw like a behind the scenes video of how they made it. And it's just, you just know so much work goes into stop motion films. And uh, oh, there's a there's a cat in the film. 
and I ain't lying when I say I met that cat on holiday in Croatia. We were just eating and that cat turned up and it was very thin and black and had like huge eyes. The next film I want to recommend is a film I used to have on DVD as a kid and loved and it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the original film. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a 1992 American black comedy fantasy horror film directed by Fran Rubel Kuzui. If you've seen the Joss Sweden TV show, you basically know the story. It's about this kind of valley girl who goes to high school, very kind of girly and um, into feminine things and obsessed with like pop culture and looks and makeups and boys and those kind of things. So this girl discovers she is a vampire slayer. So it's her job to slay the vampires in the area. So very similar to the TV show. The thing about this film is that it's not, not as dark as the TV show. It's kind of more light, more kind of romantic. Also, um, it's set in the 90s. So the, like it's very much like 90s fashion, 90s kind of, way of life and I don't know if a lot of people know Buffy's the TV show is based on a film so um, have a look it's really fun it's very 90s such a throwback but it also has the vampire hunter creepy aspect okay so hear me out on the next one I recommend Twilight <laughs> I feel like, yeah, Twilight has definitely had a kind of renaissance during lockdown. I feel like TikTok has so many good Twilight videos and just, Twilight's back again, back and thriving. And the like Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson are just like really, really cool people. So now when you watch Twilight, you're like, we know you didn't really want to be in this. Like we know this was hard for you, but I just, I just think it's such a throwback. It's also kind of a comfort watch because you know things you watched as a teenager or as a kid now watching as an adult are kind of comfortable and it's spooky, it has vampires and werewolves. I don't know, I just kind of, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's fun to look back and be like, wow, we were obsessed with this, weren't we? The next kind of fallish, cozy film I recommend is Knives Out. Knives Out came out in 2019, so I actually only watched it this year right after um, lockdown lifted where I live. I could go to like the first cinemas and I watched Knives Out and I loved it. It's like the classic whodunit. It um, reminds me of like Agatha Christie novels. A murder happens and there's a set of suspects and there's this fantastic detective who has to find out who did it. So it's Harlan Thromby, who's this really wealthy mystery writer, has a birthday um, party in his house. So he lives in this old, fantastic mansion and he invites all his family around. And during this party, or just when it's ended, he dies. And the film is about who did it, who was involved, what happened. The police kind of believes it was suicide, but this detective, Benoit Blanc, gets an anonymous tip and is asked to investigate. It really reminds me of the game Cluedo, Cluedo? Um, the one where you're like in a different room, what happened then? And I just really love the idea that you go over the same night over and over again, but you see it in different perspectives. So different family members can tell you what they were doing at the time, what they were doing at the time and how it kind of happened and it all um, it gets like pieced together. I think it's so cool and it's really fun. And there's a lot of twists and turns and you don't know what to expect. So it's just, it's just a, like a really, really fun film. And I just love the whole mansion, the really kind of old American, creepy New England type mansion uh, with like hidden rooms. And I just, I thought it was perfect for like autumn, cozy vibes. Also Lakeith Stanfield, who's kind of part of the police detective team. So attractive. Oh my God, I could just watch him for hours. Fell in love with him in Get Out when he said, get out. And whew, very happy to see him in this film. That has nothing to do with anything. That was just my personal opinion. Very hot man, very attractive. And the last film I want to talk about is The Craft, which is kind of more like a classic Halloween scary film. It's a 1996 American supernatural horror film directed by Andrew Fleming. The story follows Sarah Bailey who moves to Los Angeles 
and she realizes she has these kind of powers she doesn't quite understand and she befriends these three other girls who are rumored to be witches to then start this kind of witch coven and become this kind of outcast gang of four girls who are like rumored to be witches but then actually have powers and how they kind of deal with it in their everyday life and there's some scenes that are really really creepy like one scene at the end that's supposed to be like the, the creepiest scene i guess i was scared i was scared but i'm also very um weak <laughs> um it's it's kind of turned into this cult classic i'd say there's a lot of memes about it and they're kind of iconic the way they all dress so it's like the kind of film you you want to have watched so you get the memes and you get the references but it's also just really entertaining and definitely a bit more on the scary side for for people who watch horror probably not at all for me a bit scary <laughs> okay that was my video and um, these were my recommendations i hope you enjoyed maybe you have some recommendations for me bear in mind i am scared of a lot of things um i'd love to hear your opinion in the comments if you want i'd be thrilled if you subscribed if you want to see more bookish and film content and i hope you have a good full great halloween 2020, <laughs> let's go, woo!